This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read and recorded by Eric S. Piotrowski, FBESP.org, Madison, Wisconsin, USA, 20th of January, 2006. The Tao Te King, or The Tao and Its Characteristics, by Lao Tse. Translated by James Leggett. Part 2. Chapters 38 through 45. Chapter 38. Section 1. Those who possessed in highest degree the attributes of the Tao did not seek to show them, and therefore they possessed them in fullest measure. Those who possessed in a lower degree those attributes sought how not to lose them, and therefore they did not possess them in fullest measure. Chapter 38, Section 2 Those who possessed in the highest degree those attributes did nothing with a purpose, and had no need to do anything. Those who possessed them in a lower degree were always doing, and had need to be so doing. Chapter 38 Section 3 Those who possessed the highest benevolence were always seeking to carry it out, and had no need to be doing so. Those who possessed the highest righteousness were always seeking to carry it out, and had no need to be so doing. Chapter 38 Section 4 Those who possessed the highest sense of propriety were always seeking to show it, and when men did not respond to it, they bared the arm and marched up to them. Chapter 38, Section 5 Thus it was that when the Tao was lost, its attributes appeared. When its attributes were lost, benevolence appeared. When benevolence was lost, righteousness appeared. And when righteousness was lost, the proprieties appeared. Chapter 38 Section 6 Now propriety is the attenuated form of leal heartedness and good faith and is also the commencement of disorder. Swift apprehension is only a flower of the Tao and is the beginning of stupidity. Chapter 38 Section 7 Thus it is that the great man abides by what is solid and eschews what is flimsy dwells with the fruit and not with the flower. It is thus that he puts away the one and makes choice of the other. Chapter 39, Section 1 The things which from of old have got the one, the Tao, are Heaven, which by it is bright and pure Earth, rendered thereby firm and sure Spirits, with powers by it supplied Valleys kept full throughout their void. All creatures which through it do live. Princes and kings who from it get the model which to all they give. All these are the results of the one. Dao. Chapter 39. Section 2. If heaven were not thus pure, it soon would rend. If earth were not thus sure, t'would break and bend. Without these powers, the spirit soon would fail. If not so filled, the drought would parch each veil. Without that life, creatures would pass away. Princes and kings, without that moral sway, however grand and high, would all decay. Chapter 39, Section 3 Thus it is that dignity finds its firm root in its previous meanness, and what is lofty finds its stability in the lowness from which it rises. Hence, princes and kings call themselves orphans, men of small virtue, and as carriages without a name. Is not this an acknowledgment that in their considering themselves mean, they see the foundation of their dignity? So it is that in the enumeration of the different parts of a carriage, we do not come on what makes it answer the ends of a carriage. They do not wish to show themselves elegant-looking as jade, but prefer to be coarse-looking as an ordinary stone. 
Chapter 40, Section 1 The movement of the Tao by contraries proceeds, and weakness marks the course of Tao's mighty deeds. Chapter 40, Section 2 All things under heaven sprang from it as existing and named. That existence sprang from it as non-existent and not named. Chapter 41 Section 1 Scholars of the highest class, when they hear about the Tao, earnestly carry it into practice. Scholars of the middle class, when they have heard about it, seem now to keep it and now to lose it. Scholars of the lowest class, when they have heard about it, laugh greatly at it. If it were not thus laughed at, it would not be fit to be the Tao. Chapter 41 Section 2 Therefore the sentence-makers have thus expressed themselves. The Tao, when brightest seen, seems light to lack. Who progress in it makes, seems drawing back. Its even way is like a rugged track. Its highest virtue from the veil doth rise. Its greatest beauty seems to offend the eyes. And he has most whose lot the least supplies. Its firmest virtue seems but poor and low. Its solid truth seems changed to undergo. Its largest square doth yet no corner show. A vessel great it is the slowest made. Loud is its sound, but never word it said. A semblance great, the shadow of a shade. Chapter 41, Section 3 The Tao is hidden and has no name. But it is the Tao which is skillful at imparting to all things what they need and making them complete. Chapter 42, Section 1 The Tao produced one, one produced two, two produced three, three produced all things. All things leave behind them the obscurity out of which they have come and go forward to embrace the brightness into which they have emerged, while they are harmonized by the breath of vacancy. Chapter 42, Section 2 What men dislike is to be orphans, to have little virtue, to be as carriages without names, and yet these are the designations which kings and princes use for themselves. So it is that some things are increased by being diminished, and others are diminished by being increased. Chapter 42, Section 3 What other men thus teach, I also teach. The violent and strong do not die their natural death. I will make this the basis of my teaching. Chapter 43, Section 1 the softest thing in the world dashes against and overcomes the hardest. That which has no substantial existence enters where there is no crevice. I know hereby what advantage belongs to doing nothing with a purpose. Chapter 43, Section 2 There are few in the world who attain to the teaching without words and the advantage arising from non-action. Chapter 44, Section 1 Or fame or life, which do you hold more dear? Or life or wealth, to which would you adhere? Keep life and lose those other things. Keep them and lose your life, which brings sorrow and pain more near. Chapter 44, Section 2 Thus we may see who cleaves to fame rejects what is more great. Who loves large stores, gives up the richer state. Chapter 44, Section 3 Who is content, needs fear no shame. Who knows to stop, incurs no blame. From danger free, long live shall he. Chapter 45, Section 1 Who thinks his great achievements poor, shall find his vigor long endure. Of greatest fullness deemed a void, exhaustion ne'er shall stem the tide. Do thou what's straight, still crooked deem, 
Thy greatest art still stupid seem, And eloquence a stammering scream. Chapter 45, Section 2 Constant action overcomes cold, Being still overcomes heat. Purity and stillness give the correct law to all under heaven. End of chapter 45